Hangad ng ating pamalaan na magkaroon ng isang naliwanagang lipunan na makakatulong sa ating paglago at sa ating pamayanan. Ang atin pong uh, tipon-tipan sa PIA ngayong araw na ito mga kaibigan ay medyo kaiba sa mga atin pong uh, naunang mga episodes sa nung nakaraang taon at sa uh, unang dalawang uh, episodes. Uh, meron po tayong isang um, consultant uh, mula po, member po siya ng uh, United States uh, Press Association. Uh, actually, naglibot na rin po siya sa iba't ibang bansa upang ibahagi itong kanyang advokasya uh, para po sa ikalulutas ng ilang mga suliraning nararanasan ng ilang mga bansa at kabilang na rin po ang atin pong mga bansa Pilipinas. Pero ngayon ating pakinggan, ano nga ba itong mga solusyon na nais po niyang ibahagi? Uh, papaano siya makakatulong para iangat at mapabago ang ating pong lipunan? Akma po dun sa ating opening statement kanina. Ano? Uh, narito po si Mr. Keith Brent Duncan. Uh, siya po ay uh, consultant, uh, particularly on computer system uh, uh, architect. And uh, siya po ay um, uh, experto sa computer uh, science. So, Mr. Kit, uh, good morning and uh, welcome to our program, Tipon Tipan sa PIE. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, can you please uh, state uh, or uh, inform our media practitioners if who is Mr. Zong Khan and uh, what's your mission in our province? Well, my primary mission is an evangelist. I'm one of the top level technologists in the USA I've been developing computer systems, I'll say perfect computer systems, for now 40 years. Nine years ago, I was making so much money for these extremely large corporations that I decided to start my own series of companies. Most of them are educational companies, including inventions, to teach people how to start their own companies. Okay. Uh, you made mention of uh, your, the systems and uh, your methodologies, what are these? And can you please uh, present to well, our uh, television? Everything television. is broadcast on the internet. There's a single website called Solution Final that's a five-step process, we call it an engine, to solve any problem. We've uh, now applied that process to get rid of political corruption, crime, and drugs to free up the economy for a free trade, free travel, situation around the world. It eliminates poverty. It's a very much a step-by-step -step methodology. Okay. Eliminates uh, poverty. Uh, how would that be? Well, first off, you have to look at where the money's going. Many of the very, very wealthy people, and we call them underground criminal networks, buy the politicians. Pri primarily, the worst corruption is in the United States. Once someone's in office, there's absolutely no way to get them out of office. So we now have a, a solution called solution government that involves electronic voting so that we control and manage our corporate leaders and government leaders to remove corruption once and forever. It's called solutiongovernment.com. It's in 15 different international languages. Okay, there are two programs ta in that uh, solutions that you're mentioning, uh, the solution in the corruption and yes. also the fraud in the election. So how, how would that be? Well, it's actually quite simple. When this happens with evote.1 is the e other vote website. Evote.1. Evote.1 mm -hmm. is electronic voting. <coughs> it enables everyone to use a single, well you can share it, a single electronic device. So now instead of putting paper in the box, which means you've lost track of who voted for who, you now electronically vote with any e-device. You'll enter your, your ID number, you'll take a picture of yourself, timestamp and location, and you vote. Now you can go back on the internet anytime in the future mm -hmm. and see every one of your votes with your picture. No one can change the numbers. Mm -hmm. The second step is you treat it like a Miss Universe pageant. I'm heading to Manila soon for the similar reason. You have a winner by common popular vote. Mm -hmm. The other ones are not losers. That's runner-up backup one, runner-up backup two, number three. If the leader, who's a highly paid consultant, does not perform, we have the right by law to electronically vote after the election. We boot them out, runner-up one takes over. They don't do the job, number two takes over. Now the other thing is that we control their pay. 
For example, if we elect you to be president of the Philippines mm -hmm. and Oliver's doing a super, super job, mm -hmm. we can electronically vote and bump your pay up to make you more valuable. Mm -hmm. So there's high possibility that as, well as, as long as you're doing your job, you can be a very wealthy person. But if we suspect you're back pocketing mm -hmm. or under the table or signing contracts where you personally benefit, we can boot you out. Number four is the most important. Once someone is in office as a highly paid consultant, mm -hmm. we have the option, well, it'll be, it'll be wonderful, evote.one, to electronically tell the leader what to do. So if the baranga gets together and says, we need a new school, that now becomes the leader's number one priority. If he refuses to do it after two or three months, we boot him out, replace him with number one. So it totally overturns the current election process that's unbelievably rigged based upon money. It's all about profiteering. Okay, in the Philippines, we practiced before the manual election, and there were fraud. Again, we elevated into automated election, there is still fraud. Correct. In your evote.com, are you sure that there will be no fraud already? Yes, the way the database is designed, it's an open database. Now, what, open database. Yes, okay. which means it's a write once, read public. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to show, you'll be able to say your votes are private, which means only you can look at your votes, mm -hmm. or you can flip a flag when you vote to say that you want to show everyone else who you voted for. Mm -hmm. Now you now can go back and see that your vote went directly into a particular bucket for mm -hmm. a particular person. Mm -hmm. No one can change the numbers anymore. If they do, everyone raises a red flag and says voter fraud. Mm -hmm. There's ways to design databases for write once, read public or read only that prevents un it's called an unhackable database unhackable unhackable database mm -hmm. i know how to create unhackable databases okay. starting 40 years ago mm -hmm. okay ah uh, ito po mga kaibigan ano um na isko lang po ipaliwanag ang uh, una po niyang uh, sinasabi because uh, meron po tayong apat na gustong i-discuss dito una po yung kanyang methodology sa sinasabi niya anti-corruption na nililink niya doon sa practice natin sa pag-elect kasi doon daw nagsisimula kung bakit may mga corruption sa gobyerno, sa election pa lang, meron na. Yan, sinasabi niya ay through e-vote that one. Kaya tinatanong ko siya, dati ang practice natin manual, meron pa rin dayaan. Nag-practice tayo ng in-level up natin ng automated, meron pa rin dayaan. Pero daw, sinasabi niya, because siya po ay isang uh, computer science um, uh, grad at uh, uh, yun po yung kanyang um, talagang, uh, anong tawag natin dito, yung kanyang expertise, ay uh, hindi daw kayang ihak yung kanyang uh, e-vote that one. Pero tinatanong ko rin kung, kung paano ito i-adapt, yun yung ina-explain niya, medyo technical siya. Anyway, uh, on that aspect, meron pa tayong katanungan. Uh, we accept uh, questions from our fellow uh, media practitioners. Uh, Malabig na pagulayan. Yes, uh, good morning, sir. <laughs> good morning po sa ating lahat. Now, uh, my question, sir, is how will you do it? How will you disseminate uh, this kind of uh, voting system, this e-vote, that one? Are you going to have a seminar, training? You go from one place to another? You go from one office to another? You go from one, one town to another? Mm -hmm. To disseminate this, uh, the, this uh, proposal. A proposal. Okay. The website is solutiongovernment.com. It's already published. The key right now is to go directly to Comelex yes. and your congressman. Have you tried to it, present the, the, that? The problem in anywhere is mm -hmm. getting people to do simple callback and mm -hmm. follow-up. Mm -hmm. I've contacted almost every commissioner and director you can possibly imagine and personally gone yeah. to visit them. Comelex I haven't got into yet. Yeah, but uh, in, in, in the Philippines, uh, this is the scenario whenever you propose, even in the, in the barangay or in the lowest level of the community, you need the paper to prove that uh, you can really do your proposal. I mean, do you yes. have any document uh, presented to the COMELEC, to the Congress, or to any lawmaking Every uh, body? Everything is already published on the Internet, including 15 different languages. It's already in Tagalog language. All anyone has to do is go to solutiongovernment.com and read do, that. Oh, but it has to be to going through the mess. That's why we're here today for the press conference mm -hmm. is to get the message out. Mm -hmm. When the people literally rise up and say, this is the most common sense, logical method to forever get rid of corruption and put in 
honest, integrity-based persons mm -hmm. who are public servants. Mm -hmm. And they have every right to make a good living if they're performing mm -hmm. to meet the needs of our people. And it boils down to taxes. One of the primary problems in any country, including the Philippines, is the misuse of taxes. Mm -hmm. These government agencies, by, by nature, build huge, what we call pyramid, mm -hmm. we can call it a pyramid scheme, mm -hmm. of huge amounts of bureaucracy. So if they need to build a school or a hospital, they have to get the tax funding first, which may take six months to a year. Then they have about another one year in order to do all the paperwork, and by the time everyone's handled the money, there's very little money of the original tax dollars left. That's a problem. All these solutions that I'm presenting today mm -hmm. are called direct funding, and it really starts with education on something called worldschoolfund.com. I'm asking as an evangelist, a man of God, that every large church in the world send mission teams here. They'll come and meet this, the Department of Welfare, Governor Mamba's office, Jeff Soriano's office, all your local agencies, and go out to the individual barangas. Then, instead of giving money, they're going to go shopping. Mm -hmm. They're going to go buy basic raw material, which is roofing, concrete, internet, like a Wi-Fi hotspot, and big screen TV, to install in every classroom. This will upgrade your educational system almost instantly. Okay. Um, before that, ano, before going farther, um, we we go back to the election the, or even that one that uh, our uh, colleague here was uh, asking. So it's clear that uh, you haven't presented yet any black and white uh, proposal to the uh, lawmaking bodies or to Comelec. I have I have directly contacted United States Congress. Mm -hmm. I've contacted well over 200 to 300 journalists in the United States mm -hmm. by email and a few by phone calls and one of the problems with the media mm -hmm. is if they're not covering a particular subject that week mm -hmm. they just delete the email and they're gone so one of the reasons for the press conference today is to put the message out mm -hmm. let the people see how simple this is and it literally empowers the people to control and manage their own leadership and it also includes corporate executives you mean your your um, your step is that you consult the people first before yes. the officials. That is the reverse and of the Philippines practice because in the Philippines we have to propose that first to our lawmaking bodies to amend our law to implement the proposal. But anyway, uh, we accept uh, questions from uh, our other colleagues. Mr. Benji, the ear of the edge. Yeah, uh, Mr. Duncan, uh, thank you very much for coming. Anyway, you are telling us now that this idea is still in the process of being disseminated. And oh, there is still no country who already adopted this. That is Meaning correct. we are now into the process of informing our people there is such a thing. So uh, aside from the Philippines, what other countries uh, did you go to disseminate this? And what were the reactions, well, say percentage yeah. of uh, acceptance or the awareness she created from this because the way I see it you're right it always boils down on politics it always boils down on the people deserve only what they elect yes that's what we're saying here so um, what, what countries have you been gone to and uh, what was the reaction wonderful question yes I've approached every country, including broadcast over the internet. Everywhere I go, I'm showing how solution government is the, one of the most simplest methods to get rid of most of your election laws and all the checks and balances. It really simplifies and levels the playing field. The problem has always been publicity. And by educating the people, they now have connections to all their local officials. They're the ones that are the best ones to rise up. One of the very first qu responses I get is they'll say, good luck with that, because they're so brainwashed and accustomed that they've got a 400-year-old system of election process that's been basically evolved, which really devolved into what we call a pyramid scheme, where you have the leaders at the top of the pyramid, you've got what we call black market criminal enterprises in the middle who buy the politicians, and it becomes a very tall pyramid 
on the backs of the people and I even use the word slave trading you'll see this on the website thank you again uh, my last uh, question for you is uh, this is an American idea are you an American sir? I'm an American it's okay. a universal solution okay uh, considering that this is an American idea if you sell this to other cultures definitely you will have some problems because especially well in our case while we have the same form of government the culture of the people as against the culture of the Americans yes. how do you see that problem now well in it, the um, Latin American countries in Europe you're exactly right it is a cultural what I call cultural warfare the people who are in control of your corporations and your governments the very highest level if they ever do commit a crime at any level well now they're going to spend a tremendous amount of time covering up and controlling the information flow and it's 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 the word we use is once corrupt always corrupt which is why you need a change of leadership of people who are actually honest who have ethics virtue who have character it's all these key words that the politicians use but often once they're in office they see how much money they can make under the table which are called kickbacks graft extortion all these different things it is a universal problem from the dawn of man whenever they've had politics it's always been basically what we call a cockfight ever been to a cockfight and you've seen two roosters battle to death well to me those are politicians and what solutiongovernment.com does with evote.1 is it removes the politics we treat them as highly paid consultants it's the true key okay so yung pong uh, sinasabi ho niya ay yung pong um, katanungan kanina ay kung papaano nga ba niya ma-encourage kung baga ang ating pong uh, mga mamamayan at ang ating mga opisyal uh, tuon sa kaniyang uh, pinopropose maganda po yung kanya pong panukala no um uh, para ma maiwasan yung ang pandaraya pagdating po ng halala na siyang sinasabi ho niyang simula po ng uh, lahat po ng ating pong uh, nararanasang kahirapan. So parang uh, interrelated po yung kahirapan at saka yung korupsyon na sinasabi niya. Na kung tutuusin naman tama no sa sa Pilipinas pero yung tanong nga ni uh, kasamang Benji ay kung papaano ba ito uh, or kung ano ang magiging uh, impact ano noong uh, uh, belief o yung paniniwala yung kultura natin mga Pilipino dahil alam naman natin tayo uh, pag nagkaroon ng halalan um, namamayani pa rin yung sistema ng uh, nakaraan ano kung ano yung uh, dati nating uh, ginagawa hanggang ngayon kahit nag-automated na tayo yun pa rin okay uh, aside from poverty and corruption ano meron pa tayong meron pa siyang ibang uh, pinopropose na solusyon uh, una ay uh, uh, yung pong uh, iba ay uh, sa ekonomiya ng uh, Pilipinas. Uh, bahagi nito yung pong naranasan po natin na uh, typhoon na uh, lawin ano na marami pong uh, nasira ang bahay. Meron din po siyang pinapanukala dito uh, sistema pang sa ganun ay makakuha tayo ng pondo mula po sa ibang bansa. Uh, yun po yung uh, ikalawang uh, itatan. Oh, pero bago yan ano ay meron palang katanungan si kasamang Jene and then mamaya si manager uh, Biosa and then si Mr. Uh, Jeron. Okay, let's accept question from uh, Ms. Jene Bakiran of PIA. Uh, good morning sir. Uh, you have a very nice idea about uh, the to avoid fraud in election. So should the community or the residents uh okay your uh, idea how much will the country uh, need to fund uh, such uh, the, ele the electronic process, the equipment, how much will it cost for the country to have all these so that we can uh, use it during our election? And, and how long will it, be, uh, will it take so that uh, we can have this uh, evote.one.com? E uh, e it's, it's the most dramatic reduction in expenses when they use solution government and evote.one. Right now, how much money, and we're talking billions of pesos, how much money is used or spent by politicians through the media to get elected? The posters, the campaigns. Tremendous amount of waste of resources, and the money flow is going through the very rich people to the politicians, to the media, and for campaigning. How much wasted effort 
is a politician spending to get elected. He's spending three to six months full time trying to get elected again or reelected. Well, they're not serving the people during this process. With SolutionGovernment.com, it's totally simplified. People present their issues. They present who they are and how they're going to serve the people. And it's a very simple election process through a single database called SolutionGovernment.com. So it eliminates most of the billions of dollars that are wasted on campaigning. Okay. Yes, uh, I, I mean, sir, yes, uh, should the country adopt your idea or buy your idea, you how much the government of the uh, Philippines... It's, it's a transition period. You'll probably end up spending 5% of your taxes now instead of 100% for the election process. You'll reduce that down to about 5% of the original amount of what it costs to actually have an election. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jeron Tumabao. Good morning, sir. Um, I commend you because the idea is really good because I'm also in the electronics field. But considering your proposal, um, what will be the scope and limitation, sir? Since um, when I was in college, I have we have a colleague before, a higher batch, that who has also same proposal with your proposal, sir. It's at the electronic vote, but the scope or the limitation is just for um, small scale, for example, school-based election. So what will be the scope and limitation of your e-vote systems? It will definitely start small and they can do trial runs very quickly. But the checks and balances have already been documented on Solution Government. It's actually quite a long website and it does all the different countermeasures is the proper word, countermeasures to prevent fraud and to prevent anyone who becomes corrupt or is corrupt from holding a leadership position. This includes corporate executives as well as government leaders. When you finally get rid of the corruption at both those two levels, it totally empowers the people to control and manage their own economy. Okay. Uh -oh. You mean if it will start small? You, you, you answered it will start small. In the local elections, you mean barangays or the province or municipality could adapt that? Correct. Okay, yes. and um, uh, if ever a barangay or a municipality will adopt that, how will, um, what will be the process so that COMELEC will acknowledge the, um, the success of the program? It actually can be done with a simple PC. You could actually do your election process with a computer in your baranga polling place. People come up, take a picture of themselves, enter their vote. Now there's an electronic database on a single personal computer that shows who voted for who. No one can change the numbers. And you can always go back and check that your vote counted. That's the key. Because now when you put your paper into the box, mm -hmm. there's no connection between you and who you voted for. You mean? It, it not now. There's not. They can change the numbers all they want. And then you have all this election investigations, fraud. Mm -hmm. Your current Comelex person, John Batiska, is that being prosecuted right now because of what they call comma leaks. It was in the news last week. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yun po, ano yung uh, una niyang, uh, si Mr. Biosa, mayroon kang katanungan? Yeah? Uh -oh. Mamaya yung iba. Okay, yun po yung unang uh, naging uh, pag-uusap natin, yung proposal niya, uh, interrelated yung poverty at saka yung corruption na sinasabi niya, na nagsisimula po ng sa paraan kasi ng halalan dito sa Pilipinas na punong-puno ng dayaan. So, may ito siya pinapropose yung evote.com, uh, electronic base po ito, na pwedeng i-adapt daw muna kahit uh, i-adapt ng lokal na pamalaan Uh, limbawa ng ating pamunisipalidad, probinsya o kaya barangay upang makita yung uh, kung paano po yung proseso uh, ng uh, nasabing uh, halalan na to uh, yung paraan ng paghahalal uh, natin ng ating mga uh, leader yun po yung kanyang uh, proposal at nililinaw ho natin ito po ay public dissemination yung kanya pong ginagawa upang sa ganun yung inverted pyramid niya, nga yung sinasabi niya na imbes na uunahin mong opisyal ang lapitan mga tao, ipresenta mo muna sa mga tao upang sa ganun maintindihan ng mga tao and it will follow later na ya, kapag i-adapt ito ng lokal na pamalaan, madali na lang i-adapt o kaya i-implementa dito sa ating pong lokalidad. Yun po yung kanyang advokasya. Now, uh, dako tayo, uh, si Madam Vivian, kung wala siyang katanungan on that part. Okay. Uh, ang isa pang uh, nais po niyang uh, discuss, yung po namang paraan o yung metodolohiya niya 
uh, doon po sa atin pong ekonomiya. Uh, siguro ang atin pong uh, i-highlight dito kung papaano siya makakatulong itong solusyon na to dito sa mga kababayan natin, particular do doon sa mga um, naghirap at nawalan ng hanap buhay dahil sa bagyo. Uh, now we will discuss your proposed solution or methodology for the families uh, or the fellow Cagayanos who, were, um, who lost their livelihood and uh, their houses were damaged because of our uh, typhoon uh, lawing that we experienced last yes. year. So what will be your proposed solution linking it into the economy of the province of Cagayan? Wonderful. Well, first off, it's a question of there is no taxes and additional funds to repair every time you have a typhoon that comes through. You have, I live in a we poverty... We have fun, but it's limited. Well, it's hard to get hold of them. Yeah. And it's a temporary relief until the next typhoon comes through. If you, feed a, if you feed a neighborhood for two or three days, that's not long term. The solution ties it back in to solution housing and world school fund. When we invite the largest churches in the world to come here, the first thing they're going to do is repair the schools. Number two, they're going to fix and repair their churches, which are also educational centers. Number three, they fix the baranga halls, put the gymnasium uh, roofs back on. Number four is the most important. Anyone who lives in a bamboo hut who owns the land, they're going to provide free building material mm -hmm. to put concrete homes up, preferably on higher land. Mm -hmm. This may involve moving the barangas from, from the, the flooded areas up to the higher hills. Now, the reason this is important and critical, it's called direct funding. Okay. The people who have the money, who actually care about the economy, particularly foreigners, now know that there's zero waste zero backpocketing, zero political corruption. Mm -hmm. And your local agencies now become what we call the overseers. Mm -hmm. They're overseeing to make sure that the direct funding goes directly to the people. Now, the after effects of this is the most amazing part of the entire story. Once foreigners come here, 500 to 1,000 people in Tagigaral City in the next two or three months, it will happen with the help of the media they now get to meet the people. They meet the children. They see that the, the schools don't even have roofs, much less no one has internet or big screen TVs or computers. Their books are 10 to 15 years old. Now, when that happens and they see the rebuild of the economy, they now see this is the tropical paradise and many of them will come here to build second vacation homes. They can build a nice home for about 10,000 US dollars that would cost 100000 in the States. And many of the foreigners will want to come here to live full time. That is the biggest import of billions and trillions of dollars into your economy. Because once the money comes in the economy, it stays in the economy in the form of new small businesses which there's okay. a book out on that also. Okay, you've made mention about uh, churches uh, to link our problem to the other countries, particularly yes. America. Why churches? Churches are the ones who have the most powerful and wealthy members worldwide. I'm working directly with Archbishop Sergio Utlig. Sergio yes. Utlig. Yeah, okay, it's a it's pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> he knows me personally from the peace talks okay. and also Masad Masid, which happened about three weeks ago. Yes. Okay. So I'm asking him to contact your cardinal mm -hmm. and also to call Rome, Italy. Mm -hmm. When the Roman Catholic Church, who has 80% of the population, is Roman Catholic, when the Roman Catholic actually send mission teams here mm -hmm. to repair their different churches like Calvary Hills mm -hmm. in a gig and your local Baranga areas, this will also produce huge publicity mm -hmm. because overall the churches are the number one educational institutions. They're the ones that start schools. They're the ones that actually know what's going on in the neighborhood as far as poverty, your drug problem, your crime problem. So the churches must be the number one educational institution mm -hmm. worldwide. To, particularly to oversee the distribution of the tax money back to the people. Mm -hmm. In America, we pay about 60% of our income, if you're a small business owner, in the form of taxes. And my first question is, will you ever see that money again? Where did it go? And the answer is back pocketing. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and basically supporting criminal enterprises in America. Philippines will be soon, with the help of the press, will be the first country in the entire world mm -hmm. to get rid of corruption, crime, and drugs. Oh. That's the first. Mm -hmm. Ayan po, yung pong uh, sinasabi niya sa ek ekonomiya naman at yun sa pagtulong sa atin pong mga kababayang sinalanta ng uh, bagyo, pwede daw pong uh, uh, i-link ito uh, sa uh, ibang bansa, particular ang Amerika, sa mamagitan ng mga church dahil yung uh, ang kredibilidad daw po ng, ig ang, ng uh, mga iglesia o kaya yung mga uh, uh, simbahan ay uh, mas uh, pinaniniwalaan ng mga funding um, organizations sa ibang bansa. So, pamagitan daw po ng Charles, uh, sabi nga niya, nakipag-ugnayan na rin siya uh, kay Archbishop Sir Yutleg upang uh, kausapin siya at uh, pinropose niya yung kanyang uh, proposal kay uh, Archbishop Yutleg. And of course, do doon sa ibang uh, mga uh, uh, sekta pa o kaya sa ibang mga uh, church organizations dito po sa ating pong, uh, uh, lugar sa so, magitan ng direct funding aniya uh, yun daw pong mismong uh, magbibigay uh, ng tulong ang siyang uh, magbibigay uh, ano ng uh, uh, tulong doon sa mga mismong nasa lanta overseer na lang daw po ang ating pamalaan sila na lang daw po ang ang titingin kung paano ginagamit kung ginagamit nga pa ng husto itong mga ibibigay na tulong dito po sa ating uh, lugar so um any clarification or question uh, doon sa part na yun uh, dito sa ating mga kasamahan? Okay, si Madam Vivian de Guzman ng uh, Radio ng Bayan. Paki-open po. Yes, good morning. Yes, good morning. Uh, magandang umaga. Do you know how to speak in uh, Filipino, sir? Uh, no, ma'am. I have a Filipino wife. She's my translator. Ah, like that. But she is not here at the, as of this time. Ano? Um, at, at this point, I would like to ask this because um, you have mentioned about a lot of uh, concepts, good ideas, um, uh, good programs no, uh, to be implemented in the Philippines. But uh, I just would like to ask if uh, uh, are you here because um, you just want to advocate all these things so the government can adopt or you have an organization to uh, to help no or to be a vehicle an instrument so that we can do all this uh, we can influence uh, government we can influence private sector uh, organizations and uh, a lot of groups to help each other and implement all these ideas that you have been espousing because um, I happened to listen to oh, well uh, I eavesdropped actually no uh, when you were um, talking with uh, Congressman Ting and a lot of uh, officials in the provincial government of Cagayan. And um, I guess all your ideas are good no? because uh, these are products of um, careful observation uh, since the time siguro uh, that uh, you are in the Philippines. But uh, by the way, how long have you been in uh, the Philippines and why did you choose Cagayan first? Pala? Uh, why, are, why, why, are, why are you in Cagayan and not in other places? Well, very briefly, I'm 58 years old. Right. I lived in the United States, had some very severe problems okay. with the corruption in America. Mm -mm. Did everything I could to resolve the problems and to literally teach the USA government how to clean up their act. All right. Two years ago, I left and moved permanently to China for six months to develop, redevelop and redeploy my original product. I'm okay. the original inventor of the selfie stick. Okay. This is designed for this classroom and for around the world. Right. This is the original selfie stick in yes, front of me. Yes. Okay, then okay. I met my wife over the internet. She was working as a domestic worker in Hong Kong. That was a year and a half ago. Mm -mm. We fell in love. Okay. I moved back to the Philippines. I permanently okay. moved to the Philippines, waiting for her to finish up her, her job in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. She moved back a year ago. We're now married. We live here full time, working okay. among the people to help the Philippines be the first corruption-free country. Mm -hmm. So I'm full-time as a master educator. And a, a, another sub-answer to your question is I've been designing perfect computer systems for 40 years. Okay. I've now applied those same checks and balances to basically wipe clean many of the man-made laws. About 70 to 80 percent of the laws that are on the books now are self-serving with loopholes and back pockets and a lot of criminal enterprises built in. Solution government will literally over the next two to five years will wipe many of these laws off the books as unnecessary. 
Okay. So it will simplify your government, reduce the size of your government, so everyone inside the government is honest and what we call clean and ethical. Okay. Okay. So, so um, um, we all know that uh, if we advocate uh, this, these things, I know, we need uh, something to start on. I know. We need something, at least a seed, so that we can we can uh, see the product, we can see the result of what what are being uh, exposed now, eh, what are being uh, advocated now. Uh, have you started with that, or um, is there any any um, uh, way that uh, we have started? Because in the in the Philippines we have a lot of policies, and so that we can. Uh, we can, if our intention is to clean our government, to make it uh, uh, very responsive to uh, the needs of the people, we have to start uh, changing our policies. Have we gone into that, uh, sir? Yes, it's covered by the checks and balances, the transition period. How? On the Built by Keith website, which is my primary crusader evangelist website, this is called Unocracy, mm -hmm. and the main website but, is built by Keith. But There's there were those who already started with that, and uh, it ended with like that also, uh, because they did not go into the system. They did not uh, change, uh, actually, or did not uh, influence those who are makers of the policies in the government. Uh, how do you react on that? Well, the problem is bureaucracy. Every government that's ever been in existence constantly adds rules and regulations but very seldom do they ever reduce the rules and regulations because of the previous history. Most of your new leaders, when they come into office, they spend half their time getting rid of the old contracts, fulfilling previous obligations from the person that's now free and gone, that made their money and left. That's a major problem. So there will be a transition period, and the real answer to your question is on Built by Keith are 66 websites including with video that systematically address each one of the major world problems and a systematic solution methodology to solve that problem, which is your corruption, your crime, and your drugs. When that happens and you downsize your government because you don't need much government at all, then every baranga, every village takes care of their own problems. That happens to be a website called Unity URL. Unity URL is designed for community meetings where people come together to talk about what they love about their neighborhood. Number two, you'll have a group of people that come and complain. They'll say, we have a horrible school. Our roads need to be paving. And that's perfectly fine. But if they propose, if they show the problem, they're also required to provide the solution. So what this does, it cross-trains everyone to be problem solvers. Solve the problems at your own local level. It's your tax money anyway. Most people would love to keep the tax money in their own pocket and make sure that they give 50,000 pesos during the year in taxes. They want 50,000 pesos worth of benefit for their neighborhood. They don't want the money going to Manila and never coming back. So the answer to your question, it's all spelled out on these websites with unocracy.com being the primary umbrella. But uh, our, our suggestion, if we may, you know, uh, getting into the, um, uh, the line of thinking of Madam Vivian of uh, PBS Radio Nang Bayan, we cannot get rid of uh, uh, taking the black and white uh, proposals, the papers to our lawmaking bodies, because that's the system. Uh, we cannot rely on the the internet because um, they might not get totally your idea on that. So better if uh, we prepare the black and white proposal of it, we submit it to our lawmaking bodies, they will discuss it, there will be feasibility studies on that before the, um, the policies will be um, uh, implemented uh, in our society. That is the system of government in the Philippines and uh, as I was saying that we cannot re get rid of uh, presenting still the black and white. Uh, not be contented on the um, uh, internet based um, uh, proposals, sir, if you, uh, you may. Oh, I totally agree and the problem with most governments worldwide is the red tape bureaucracy. You even have a law that says red tape 
if you're trying to reduce the amount of red tape. And you also have a law that says no fixers, which are people that take money under the table in order to fix visas, documents, whatever. Well, we need fixers to fix the government. And that's what these broadcast situations are. My goal with my wife, who runs a website called Mary Rights, is to fill up stadiums full of people and to train the trainers to use the methods here to literally change their own communities. And it's really based upon one relationship at a time. Okay. Uh, meron bang ibang uh, clarification? Yes. Kasama uh, uh, as I was listening to your ideas, sir, I came to uh, realize that it's all internet-based. And knowing that, fil that here in the Philippines, we have a very low uh, internet connection. Sure. So do you have also a solution for this? And that considering the fact that not all people here are techie or not all are uh, privileged to have smartphones, so how could that be? And not all are, are, are actually uh, knowledgeable in using the, the internet or scanning or browsing right. the internet. Perfect question. The reason is we will have free internet. When I'm asking the, the churches to support and pay for free internet in the schools, you will soon have free internet in every baranga. Now what will happen, the teenagers and the young people are already using smartphones. They are networking creatures of habit. They're the ones that understand the technology and use this to connect with each other. So soon, the, and these are, these are unbelievably inexpensive, particularly used smartphones from America and other countries. We go through smartphones at least once a year. That means we've got nine smartphones that still work from the last 10 years. That's a remarket. So that you eventually, you will soon get internet in your neighborhoods and have the ability to electronically communicate with your neighbors over Facebook, Messenger, Skype, all the different telecommunications. This also dramatically reduces the power that Globe, Smart, and TM have over your prepay. So there's a, there's a ser yeah, free, okay, free yeah. government Wi-Fi is now occurring in your own city. Yung proposal niya, bigyan daw lahat ng internet connection ng mga barangay. Oh, sir, eh, are you, um, or you already uh, uh, have the survey of how many barangays do we have? And could that be possible? Well, it, it's very, very possible, but it has to start mostly with your colleges. I've met every one of your local presidents and deans of education. Mm -hmm. Almost every director here in town has personally sat down and spoken with me. And I'm asking them, what are your number two problems? The first one they say is budgeting. Mm -hmm. We can't get funding to get anything done. Mm -hmm. Number two is I, tell, I immediately say, I already know what your number two problem is. Mm -hmm. And they say bureaucracy. Yeah, it takes so much paperwork because they're deathly afraid of being accused of backpocketing or fraud or mismanagement. Well, that is the major problem right there. Solution government does provide direct funding. And when people see that the trillions of dollars are out there in the hands of people who are very wealthy, who actually do care mm -hmm. for the people, and when they come and move to the Philippines mm -hmm. to build factories, business parks, resorts, convention centers, hotels, condominiums, particularly rest homes and retirement communities, mm -hmm. that totally transforms your business from 80% of your income as an export, rice and corn. Mm -hmm. It now becomes an import of foreigners who want to come and live in a peaceful, quiet country, have wonderful food, have wonderful services, decent roads, wonderful hospitals and schools. Mm -hmm. These are all the different reasons I'm talking to people like Dr. Rodney Guzman and Wilma Guzman. They all personally know me, including all of Governor Mamba's staff and Jeff Soriano's. Mm -hmm. So I'm here working full time on behalf of the Philippine people, most of it's because I'm sick and tired of the USA government. I'm tired of their bureaucracy and their massive corruption and the drain of trillions of dollars into the pocket of what we call the one percenters. And it's happening here in Tagigarel City with SM and Robinson, your big malls. When they move in, that's going to totally kill your local small business opportunities. I know this. So what this is going to do, this is going to provide millions, millions of new business owners solution housing, construction, furniture, food, TVs, 
new schools, hospitals, better roads, all the basic infrastructure that you need to be a world-class corruption-free country. That's mm -hmm. the entire beauty of this entire program. Okay. Uh, any follow-up? Kasamang uh, Janet? Wala na. Yeah. Is there any country in the Philippines wherein uh, you, were, you serve as an instrument of uh, inviting churches to, uh, to give or to establish free Wi-Fi or free uh, internet connection? Is there any place in the country, sir? Yes. Um, I'm actually broadcasting and calling back to the United States to the biggest churches possible. I have visited well over 200 churches just in the last two and a half to three years, to primarily to meet the pastors to listen to the needs of the congregation and the community. There's a website called Christ Domain that's on your handout. The goal behind Christ Domain is to remove the barricades that exist between the churches. Almost every church that I've met, and I can, I can list off the names of the ones I visited, most of them claim we are the one and only true church of God. And I'm not beating up on them, I'm just saying this is a fact, and I come from the Baptist heritage, the Baptists say it also. The problem is the churches are not communicating between denominations. They're not working together. When they finally get the pastors associations and people like Southern Baptist Convention and North American Mission Board in Atlanta, Georgia, to finally send mission teams and to put the word out, including through the Roman Catholic Church, through Pope Francis, they are the ones that have the most powerful voice. Because when you go to church on Sunday morning, what's the pastor and preacher talking about? They're talking about family relationships. They're talking about education. They're talking about ethics. They really should be talking about building small businesses, teaching people to be self-sufficient in their daily lives. Okay. So, ayun po, uh, ang uh, kanya pong uh, mga proposal, sabi nga naman natin, magaganda yung kanyang uh, mga adhikain ano, para po sa atin, para matanggal po yung sinasabi natin, uh, uh, mga problema natin, mga suliranin natin. Dangan nga lamang at uh, yung sinasabi nga niya ay um, ayaw niya, as much as possible, ayaw niya sanang i-adapt yung, yung bureaucracy na sistema natin dito. Kaya nga, puro sinasabi niya is internet-based. Kasi ganun ka sa, sa kanilang uh, bansa. Ano? Uh, pero yun nga, ang, ang sinasabi rin ho natin, pinapanukala natin sa kanya, na itry din niyang um, uh, dumaan doon sa kung ano yung proseso ng Pilipinas dahil uh, yun po ang kasalukuyan nating uh, uh, ina-adapt. So, ang, uh, napakarami po niyang uh, maganda. Balikan ho natin bago tayo mag-end. Before we end in this uh, program, um, Yung pong sinasabi niya, una, para matanggal po ang uh, korupsyon at ang uh, kahirapan sa atin ay uh, magmumula po dun sa paraan o sistema natin sa paghahalal. Uh, uh, meron siyang pinopropose na e-vote that one. Uh, pangalawa po ay uh, doon sa ating ekonomiya. Pwede pong uh, iling sa mamagitan ng uh, mga, uh, mga simbahan. Uh, yung pong problema natin, pwede po yung uh, pagpondo daw sa mga eskwelahan, lalong-lalo na yung mga nasira ng uh, mga bagyo at iba pang mga kalamidad. At ikalawa, indirect funding uh, na sinasabi ho niya na pwede rin, uh, pwede rin niyang iling doon sa mga organisasyon doon sa Amerika upang sa ganun ay uh, magbigay ng uh, uh, tulong para po sa atin pong uh, mamamayan. At uh, ka uh, kasabay din ho niyo, nabanggit ho niya na itong mga nagpupondo kung uh, uh, pwede rin po silang personal na bumisita at tingnan ang kalagayan ng ating uh, 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 lugar ay uh, isang paraan din yon ng pagkikayat ng mga turista. Siyempre, kung pupunta sila dito, eh, magiging turista ho sila at sinasahe niya, ang, ang dadalhin nila dito ay mga dolyar ho yan na iikot ho sa ating ekonomiya. Yun po yung uh, 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 gist nung kanyang uh, uh, sinabi. So, uh, now, uh, Mr. Kit, uh, before we end, uh, what will be the next step that you will do after um, uh, disseminating all these uh, solutions that uh, uh, you have discussed with us. So what will be the next step? The next step is to build teams. And these are worldwide teams. We're asking everyone to join the Built by Keith movement and to literally be the most powerful grassroots movement in world history. I'm going back to Manila very soon to meet with your military. I've already applied for my military press credentials. I've already made con tremendous connections with NBI, Immigration, Department of Education. 
I'm going back to Department of Energy. I really would love to have people start calling people like Jessica Soho and your other major news networks so I can finally get on national TV and actually have interview process like this. I would love to speak with Bato De La Rosa on solutiondrugs.com that will get rid of your drug and your alcohol problem. And eventually with Duterte, I'd love to go sp have a conversation with Duterte because he's a man of my own true heart. His number one goal is to help get rid of corruption and to actually serve the people. And that is the mission of myself and all the people who join our Reformation movement. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Keith Brent Duncan. Uh, yep, sa po ay isang uh, consultant at uh, sinasabi ho natin computer system ba architect ho siya na yun nga po pinapropose niya more on the, kaya nga sinasabi niya internet based uh, uh, yung mga sistema nga pinapropose niya dahil yun po yung kanyang uh, linya. Uh, good luck and thank you very much for uh, helping our government uh, improve the, uh, the, or uh, thank you for your proposals. I do hope that uh, our local leaders and the public will also adapt your very good uh, proposals. Sa ngalan po ng ating uh, regional director Director, Director Purita Likas, at syempre sa ngalan po ng ating mga media practitioners na kasama ngayong araw, ito po ang inyong lingkod, Oliver Temeo Bakay. Thank you very much. Hanggang po sa susunod na ating Tipon Tipan sa PIA. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat.